Hi, everybody. Welcome again to Conversational English. Today, we have the beginning of a new unit, Unit 5, as Betty and Edward Hudson's uh, get into gear and uh, packing and, and uh, buying things that they need. They've been very, very, very busy. Unit 5 begins with Unit 5 will find the Hudsons preparing for their brief trip to Hong Kong. International travel is a little complicated, but it's usually very rewarding as well. 嗯,好,所以各位同學,我們從今天起呢,連續的三課我們要來進入的是第五單元囉。那麼第五單元主要會幫助大家來學習一些出國旅行相關的英文,所以呢,會非常的有用。also, we start, of course, a new lesson today, which is called, What Can I Do For You Guys? What's that about? Let's look at the lesson preview. Betty and Edward have decided to see their travel agent to help them plan a safer, more comfortable, and more efficient trip. Mm. 那么呢,在这个单元进入的第一课,当然就是这个Hudson夫妇呢,要去先见旅行社的人,因为呢,出国旅行的第一个一定是要来规划一个安全舒适而且呢,是很有效率的一个旅行,所以我们就可以赶快
Now we're ready for part three, words and phrases. Brief, brief. We just had a brief shower, but now the sky is clear. Complicated, complicated. 复杂的. The math problem was so complicated that only a few students got the correct answer. 这道数学的题目十分复杂, 只有少数学生正确的解除答案。Rewarding, rewarding. 有收获的。Traveling alone can be difficult, but it is most often a rewarding experience. 独自旅行是有一点难度, 不过通常会是很有收获的经验。Efficient, efficient. 有效率的. These ants are very efficient. They built their underground colony in just three days. 这些蚂蚁很有效率, ditto, ditto. 我也是. I feel like pizza for dinner. Ditto. I'll hop on my motorcycle and bring us back one. 我晚餐想吃披萨耶。我也是耶。我就跳上我的摩托车，然后去买一个回来给我们吃喽。Motion. Motion. 示意. The sergeant silently motioned two of his soldiers to approach the target. Tough, tough. Raising teenagers can be tough on parents, but it can be made easier by trying to communicate with them. 养育青少年对父母来说可能很艰难，但尝试与他们沟通会轻松一点。Economy，economy，经济。The economy of Germany is the largest and one of the wealthiest in all of Europe. 德国的经济体是全欧洲最大也最富有的。I need to say something about this word because so many students mispronounce it. M Y Zue is economy. The second syllable has the accent. Economy. If the end is I C, M I C, then it's the adjective and then it becomes economic. For example, economic development. The economy is doing pretty well. We will have good economic development this year. 嗯,好,所以这里呢, Bruce老师提醒大家的就是, 如果以经济的名词 economy来讲的话, 通常它的重音会下在第二个音节, 从前面数, 但是如果是形容词的时候, 我们通常呢, 除非是例外, 那重音会放在倒数第二个音节, 所以会变成 economic, 这样子的一个发音, 要小心。Oh, it sounds so good when you say it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue with the next item. Cut close. Cut close. 几乎就到最后一秒. Paul likes to arrive at the airport just before check-in closes. But his wife Anita doesn't like to cut deadlines so close. Apologize. Apologize. 道歉. 
You should apologize to Rose for your unkind comments about her clothing. 你应该为你对罗斯衣着不恰当的评论向他道歉。Inconvenience. Inconvenience. 不便。Taking out the garbage to the garbage truck may seem like an inconvenience, but it's important to keep our homes clean. 追垃圾车去丢垃圾看起来似乎不便，但却能够让家中来保持干净。Count on. Count on. 指望。I want Nick on our project. Because we can always count on him to do his best until the work is finished. 我想要让尼克参与这项计划，因为我们可以指望他会尽自己的力量做到最好，直到这个工作结束。Embarrassing. Embarrassing. 令人不好意思，尴尬的。It was a very embarrassing moment on the crowded MRT when I stepped on someone's foot and she screamed. 在拥挤的捷运上踩到某人的脚，而且呢，她大声的尖叫，那是个十分令人尴尬的时刻。Carrier. Carrier. 航空公司。Dozens of carriers fly in and out of Taiwan's Taoyuan International Airport every day. 每天都有数十架的航空公司班机从台湾的桃园国际机场起飞和降落。Red eye flight. Red eye flight. 红眼班机。We took the red-eye flight from Seattle, leaving at 11 p.m. and arriving in New York at 7 a.m. the next day. 我们晚上十一点搭乘从西雅图起飞的红眼班机，在隔天早上的七点抵达纽约。Business class. Business class. 商务舱。Travel by business class offers larger and more comfortable seats, but it costs about twice as much as economy class tickets. 旅行坐商务舱的座椅比较大，也比较舒服，但是呢，机票的价钱是经济舱的两倍。Economy class. Economy class. 经济舱。Most people have to travel in economy class because business class and first class seating is much more expensive. 大多数人旅行呢都是搭经济舱，因为商务舱和头等舱的机票贵多了。I'd like to point out something here about what we might call spelling. In the sentence you just saw, when we talked about economy class, we used it as a noun phrase. So if you were paying attention, you might have noticed that there was no hyphen there. But in the same sentence, when we said business class and first class seating, then business class and first class become adjective phrases, and we will add a hyphen so we're not confused.、Uh, it's not business class seating; it's business class. Seating and again, first class seating. So that's why we use the hyphen to bring the two words together, so they become a unit. And when we're reading, it becomes very easy to understand the meaning. That's right. 好，所以这里同学们，如果像刚刚 Bruce 老师讲的，有稍微细心一点，会发现我们前面讲到的 economy class 这两个字中间没有 hyphen 的原因呢，是因为 economy 它是形容词。而这个 class 呢，就是这个舱等呢，它是名词，所以前面的形容词来形容后面的这个名词，它们中间当然是不需要 hyphen 的。可是后面接着我们会看到的是 business class 跟 first class 这两个字呢
，他们的中间都被加了一个 hyphen 的原因，是因为这两个字他们是被合起来，然后整个一起被当成一个形容词。形容的对象是谁呢？就是后面的 seating 啊，这个坐的舱等的座位。所以呢，为了让这个阅读比较方便，而且让大家不会去搞不清楚到底是谁跟谁加起来去形容谁，所以呢，我们就用这样一个 hyphen 的功能把。这个名词聚集起来的，表示他们就是一个形容词，来形容后面的名词，所以这个非常的重要。布鲁斯老师提醒大家，同学可以把它写下来。Okay, good point. Now let's continue. Pad, pad. 一叠。Alice keeps a pad of note paper on her desk, right by her telephone, so she can take messages quickly. And efficiently, Alice 放了一叠便条纸在她的电话旁边，那么她可以快速又有效率的记录一些留言。Overnight, overnight. 过夜。We rode our bikes many hours on that hot summer day, and finally decided to stay overnight at a small hostel. 我们在炎夏的某一天骑了数个小时的自行车，最后呢，决定在一家小旅社过夜。Mandarin, Mandarin， 华语，中国的。The word Mandarin refers both to the official dialect of spoken Chinese, as well as to Chinese people and culture. Mandarin 这个字，它可以是指中国的官方语言，也可以是指中国人与中国文化。Phoenix, Phoenix， 凤凰。The Greeks and the Chinese have legends about the phoenix, a bird that burns up upon death and then is reborn from its own ashes. 在希腊和中国的传说中，都有一种能浴火重生的鸟，就叫做凤凰。Rate, rate， 价钱。If you rent a car for a longer time period, I can give you a better rate so you can save some money. 如果你可以租长期一点的车，我就可以给你好一点的价钱，让你省点钱。E-ticket, e-ticket， 电子机票。Today, many airline companies issue e-tickets instead of paper tickets to save time, money, and resources. 许多航空公司现在都用电子机票来取代纸本的机票，不仅省时间、省金钱，也省资源。Voucher, voucher， 订房单。Your travel agency may give you a voucher to prove that you have reserved and paid for rooms in a foreign hotel. 你的旅行社会给你一张订房单，来证明你在国外的某个饭店已经预定了一个房间，并且也付款了。I'd like to bring up a little point here about our last item, voucher, uh, home and your er. But vouch by itself is a verb, and it means to swear, to promise, to give an oath. If you use vouch, uh, as a verb, remember to add for. I vouch for my friend. I believe him. I trust him. I vouch for him. 嗯，好。所以这里要小心的就是说呢，这个如果 vouch 把 er 拿掉变动词，就是担保、保证的意思。所以刚刚讲的后面加一个 for， 再加一个对象。比如说我替 Bruce 老师做担保，我保证他没有问题，那就是 I vouch for Bruce。这样。That's it. Okay. That finishes our part three. Whew. Now let's take a break. In part four, uh, the extra serving, we have for you a lot of information in your workbook about preparing for, planning for overseas travel. 
Uh, most of us will have the chance in a lifetime, perhaps many chances in a lifetime, for pleasure, for school, for work, uh, for curiosity, that would be pleasure. In order to go overseas, though, it can be a bit complicated, so a good plan will help you enjoy the trip uh, rather than regret that you ever left. So be sure to read your, note, your workbook this week. 好，所以本周的资讯补给站呢，不管这个呃布鲁老师提到，你可能要出国去念书、出国去工作，或者只是出国去旅游或好奇，但是呢，知道怎么样呢来准备跟规划出国的旅行，这相关的英文对你都会很有帮助，所以不要错过这个礼拜的广播。And now we're ready for the quiz. This week we have something special for you in part five, the quiz, a memory quiz, a memory check. How well do you remember what happened from your reading or watching the dialogue on TV? We have five uh, actions or events that happened in the dialogue. <clears throat> I'm going to read them from top to bottom and then you decide which one happened first, which one happened second, and so on. Here are the events first. Marge asks the Hudsons how long their trip will be. Marge asks the Hudsons which airline they would like to take. Ed explains to Marge the purpose of the trip. The Hudsons and Marjorie hug each other. Betty offers an apology. Now, of those five items, which one happened first? Well, it would be the greeting, of course. The Hudsons and Marjorie hug each other. That's right. You can see the number one there on your screen. Okay, so we're going to see the first one. We're going to choose the Hudson. They and Marjorie, which is this tourist group, they hug each other. This is the first one that appears in the order of the time sequence. All right, what happened after that? If you remember, and this makes sense too. Ed explains to Marge the purpose of the trip. Mm. Uh, she has to know that before she can make her arrangements. 没错，所以呢，接下来第二个正确应该要选的是 Ed。他跟这个 Marge 来解释了他这一趟旅行的目的，因为这样子呢，当然他才能帮他去做规划。And if you remember, both Betty and Ed were a little embarrassed because maybe usually they travel very far or for a long time, maybe on vacation and spend a lot of money. Uh, but this time it was strictly for business. So Betty offers an apology was the third event that happened. 那么接下来呢，这个 Betty 呢，她呢，这个跟这个 March 道歉了，还有刚刚 Bruce 老师提到，其实连 Edison 也道歉，因为可能他们之前呢，这个飞的都是很长途，又很多天，所以呢，这个花的钱比较多。但这一趟呢，很短，而且呢，就是很快的就回来了，所以呢，他们就跟他这个做道歉，说不好意思，所以这是第三。Okay, and fourth would be the first item. Marge asks the Hudsons how long their trip will be. 嗯，接下来第四个发生的事情，当然就是 Marge 就问说，那你们打算呢，要这个呃，有几天的旅行呢 ？Well, I guess you can guess what the last item is. There's only one blank left. That's right. Marge asks the Hudsons which airline they would like to take, and I remember that Betty said the carrier is not important. That's right. So, 呢，最后一个当然就是剩下的这个 Marge 呢，他问这个 Hudson 夫妇呢，他们想搭哪一家航空公司？那么刚刚不是老师也提到了 ，Betty 回答其实是哪一家都无所谓。好。嗯。Okay. Hope you did well on the quiz. More importantly, that you learned something from it. Now we're ready as we get ready to close the program for you to watch the dialogue for the second and final time. Good to see you both again. Sam here, Marge. Nice to meet you too. 
Ditto. How have you been, Marge? As usual, busy, busy, busy. Oh, don't complain. It's tough economy out there, you know. Yes, it is. I'm actually happy that I have plenty of work to do recently. So, what can I do for you guys? We have a meeting with a company in Hong Kong that wants to do business with us. We've agreed to an exploratory meeting at uh, 10.30 at their company tomorrow. I know it's cutting it quite close, Marge, and I apologize for any inconvenience, but hello. For a moment, I thought I was talking to my good friends, Betty and Ed Hudson. Come on. You guys know you can always count on me anytime to help you out. For me, it's a pleasure, not a problem. We're flattered to hear that, Marge. So, give me the details. You said tomorrow. How long will this trip be for? That's the embarrassing thing about it, Marge. We just want to go to the meeting, not take a vacation. Got it. No worries. What time and what carrier would you like? Uh, we want to leave first thing and return the same evening, but not a red-eye flight. The carrier isn't important. Okay. Is this business class or economy? No. Business. Okay. I can get you out of Taipei at 7.30 Friday morning, arriving Hong Kong at 8.45. That'll give you plenty of time to make the meeting, no matter where it is in Hong Kong. Great. Uh, we'd also like a hotel room, even though we're not staying overnight. Then you might as well get something cheaper than usual. The Mandarin Phoenix has great rates and is centrally located. Sounds great. Oh, uh, what about our return trip? Uh, the same carrier, leaving Hong Kong at 7.45, arriving Taipei at 9 o'clock. How does all that sound? No wonder we always come back to you, Marge. You're the best. Here's a copy of all the information, and here are your e-tickets and hotel voucher. Anything else? No, that's just great, Marge. See you. Bye-bye. Well, now that Betty and Edward Hudson have their tickets uh, and reservations all set, the next logical step is for them to get ready for the trip itself, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing next week, is talking about getting ready for uh, getting your suitcases ready, your clothing and other things. Learn how to talk about everyday items that maybe you don't know, but would come in very useful if you ever do travel overseas. So make sure you join us next week. Until then, bye-bye.